Candy was like, girl, who? Sheree was like, you, I'm calling you. <laughs> I'm calling you. The common piece he's knocking <laughs> Courtney says that her and Ralph are fast and furious cousins. Now, I don't know what that's called for. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Roxy, with Roxy Says, and we're going to talk about it. So today we are reviewing The Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 15 Reunion Part 1. Let's get into it. So I watched the Peacock version. I did hear that the Peacock version has some extra scenes that were not included in the regular Bravo version. So if you hear me talking about something and you don't know what I'm talking about, then you like, girl, when did that happen? That's probably the reason why, but it's okay. We gonna rock out, okay? We gonna get through this together. I'll start off by saying this. To me, the reunion was very chaotic. It was a lot of stunts and shows, a lot of stuttering and stammering, okay? There were multiple times that I had to hit rewind because I couldn't even hear what was being said. Everyone was speaking over each other. It was a mess. And it honestly reminded me of a scene in Dreamgirls, so I just might break out into song during this review. I'm just letting y'all know up front, okay? So if this is your first time here, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back. We just hit 1,000 subscribers and I... So if you are not one of those 1,000 subscribers, hit that button, hit subscribe, hit the bell so that you can know every time I upload. Hello? Let's get into it. All right, y'all. So as we see, everyone is arriving early. And to me, all of the ladies looked absolutely gorgeous. So let's start with the looks. In all honesty, my least favorite dress was Sheree's. It was very plain. The corset I didn't like. And it was the only dress that didn't have like any sparkles. So to me, it looked kind of out of place. But my most favorite dress was definitely Candy's. Ooh, baby. I loved that dress. Did you see Andy's face when Candy came out on stage? He looked like a little child. He was like, wow. <laughs> He was enamored with her dress. I will say that all of the ladies, their makeup, gorgeous. Every single one. I loved all of their makeup looks. So Andy comes out the gate with the shade. He tells Sheree that she looks refreshed and he asks her, what did she have done? And she was like, um, well, you know, I was having uh, some trouble uh, breathing. So while they were fixing that, I told him, you know, uh, uh, tune up my nose, tune up my nose. Sheree, it's 2023. Girl, you don't got to give that excuse. Everyone gives the excuse. They got hit in the face with a ball. They couldn't breathe, so they got their nose done. Sheree, it's okay. Everybody on that stage done got something touched, whether it be their face or their body. It's all right, Sheree. It's okay. I will say that Sheree's swelling obviously went down, and she does look good. In my opinion, I think that she does look refreshed. But of course, after she told that little tale, Candy bust out laughing. She was like, ah! <laughs> Andy makes note that Marlo has lost some weight and he asks her what has she been doing and she says you know I've been doing what everyone else is doing the shot 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 shots so Marlo is referring to the Ozempic shots a lot of the celebrities your faves have been using Ozempic to lose weight quickly and they better be careful because I've seen that the long-term side effects of using Ozempic are not too pretty but more importantly the people who actually need Ozempic like to stay alive they're not able to get their medication because all of these celebrities Celebrities are using it to lose weight. Give them people back their medicine. Next, we see that Sanya is four and a half months pregnant with her rainbow baby. So, of course, we are all so excited for Sanya because she did suffer a miscarriage. She says that she is due on Christmas Day. And I'm like, that is amazing. I hope that Ross is there for the delivery. All right, y'all. So we start off with Sheree and Andy asks her about Bob's daughter and the fact that her kids didn't mention anything to her. Sheree is sticking to the story that she didn't know and that the kids didn't tell her because they knew that she wouldn't give a damn about it. Okay, that's her story. She's sticking to it. Then Andy brings up her fashion site with no fashions. How dreadful. They also bring up Candy on Speak On It, calling Drew and telling her like, hey girl, did you see Sheree's new face? She kind of looks like you. And Sheree says, in all honesty, if Drew thinks that she looks like me, I would be offended because that was my worst picture. <laughs> that did make me chuckle, but even though we don't see it for Drew too much, I will never deny that Drew is beautiful. Chow, next Andy brings up Martel and that dirty D he been slanging all through Huntsville, baby. And you know Sheree, she gonna defend her man. She says that despite what we see, See, when Martel is in her presence, he's a good guy. Girl, we don't care what he do when he's in your presence. It's all about what he does when he's not in your presence. That's what really matters. But she does say, even though she likes Martel and she enjoys her time with him, she did have to take a step back from their relationship because she was getting intertwined in all of his other mess. 
And I'm like, yeah, girl, that reasoning sounds all cute, but we know that the real reason is because the contract is up, okay? So now we're moving on to Kenya, and baby, I will say this, it really broke my heart to see Kenya in this reunion. I hate to admit it, Marlo did tweet later about Kenya falling flat and a lot of her reads falling short. They did. A lot of Kenya's explanations for things, as I'm going to go into detail later in this video, made no sense. And I did get secondhand embarrassment watching Kenya navigate this reunion multiple times. I'll be lying if I did not say that. Now it was said that the ladies did get news of a reboot slash recasting before they went on stage to film this reunion. So that would explain why those ladies were up there fighting for their lives and fighting for a moment. So they bring up the whole Kenya, Martel and Sheree situation. And they mentioned the fact that Sheree said that Kenya never has a man. And Sheree says, yeah, well, she's a beautiful girl. Next time, make sure you have a man with you. Kenya says, look, I don't want any type of man. I don't want a man. She's, she's saying, I don't want a man like Martel, right? Low key. She's like, I don't want any type of man. I don't want any man that's in the street all over the place doing this, that, and the third. And Sheree's like, well, you with Roy, so... He be doing the same thing. Okay, T. And Kenya's like, yeah, but we're just dating. And Sheree's like, okay, and me and Martel are just dating. So what's the difference? And then Kenya says, yeah, well, why are you trying to weaponize that against me when we're only dating? You're trying to make it seem like it's something different. And Sheree is like, yeah, that's exactly my point. There's no difference. We're both dating two ain't shit mofos. And I was like, bloop, Sheree got you with that one, Kenya. She did. Next, Andy says to Kenya, girl, are you divorced yet? I hope you're divorced. And Kenya says no. And she says one of the reasons why she isn't divorced yet is because her and Mark keep going back and forth about matters concerning Brooklyn. And she says that Mark actually actually use the situation that happened in Alabama when Marlo's crazy ass was at the door kicking, banging, and screaming, Summer! Summer! Right? Remember? Mark says that Kenya put Brooklyn in a dangerous situation. Yes. Mark Daly, the FaceTime dad who Brooklyn only spent a night with after how long? Yeah, him. But Kenya says now it's a court issue. And Marlo says, well, I apologize. You know Marlo, she be stuttering. So it sounded like she said apologized but she really said, I apologize that Brooklyn was even part of that mess. And Kenya's like, huh, what? What are you even talking about? What are you even saying? And Andy's like, I think she's trying to apologize. And Kenya says, an apology would have been you calling me when this was all in the headlines, but you didn't, and now it's a legal matter. So, and she reaches behind her back and she pulls out a piece of paper and she says, you're gonna have to appear in court about this matter. And she asks Andy to hand the subpoena over to Marlo. So Andy is looking at it and he is like, uh, baby girl, this is blank. <laughs> and they all start cracking up. And I was like, Kenya, no. Oh my gosh, Kenya, no. And then Kenya's like, oh, well, they must have printed the wrong one. Baby, you can't be pulling receipts like that out your booty and it's the wrong paper. You need to come correct if you're going to be doing that. And in regards to the subpoena, I was actually watching Kempire's live yesterday, right? Yeah, I was watching his live yesterday and an actual attorney called in and she said, what Kenya is actually requesting Marla to do is to come to court and testify in Kenya's defense saying, look, Brooklyn was not in any immediate danger, right? But the way that Kenya is presenting it is that she's presenting it as if she's against Marlo, when in actuality, she needs Marlo's testimony to help her win her case against Mark. So it's kind of strange that she would present it the way that she did. You get what I'm saying? Then I guess because that little stunt flopped, Kenya then says, well, Mark and I are going through discovery with our divorce. And I found out that two years ago, Marlo was texting Mark. And he told me that the reason that Marlo was texting Mark was because Marlo was trying to dig up dirt on me. But Kenya also says that the actual texts are unavailable. All she can see is pretty much the date and the time. And they're like, so how do you know what was said? And she's like, because Mark told me. And I'm like... First of all, and I love me some Kenya, but are we believing that Mark told Kenya that? And even if we are believing that Mark told Kenya that, Kenya, how can you even believe anything that comes out of Mark's mouth? <laughs> like, how can you believe anything that comes out of his mouth or take his word for anything at this point? I just feel like without the actual text, that fell flat too. And then Kenya starts mentioning that Marlo went to Mark's restaurant. I've been to Mark's restaurant, Soko, hello, Brooklyn, New York. And then she also brings up a previous event and she said that Marlo looked really comfortable talking to Mark. And it was just, it really seemed like Kenya was grasping for straws. And it made me cringe because it seemed like Kenya was just throwing stuff out there to see what would stick. 
And I hated that for my girl. I really did. Then they bring up Martel not paying for Sheree's birthday dinner. Okay, we don't even care about that at that point. But Andy says, girl, you do have a strange relationship when it comes to paying bills, bitch. (laughs) Bitch. Andy was on one tonight, okay? He was shading everybody. He was shading everybody. And if I was Sheree, I would have been so embarrassed. Now, you know if one of the other girls said that Sheree would have cursed their ass out, but because it came from her boss, she had to keep it cute. But I know she was embarrassed. Did you notice in this part how Sheree looped Candy into her answer? And Candy's like, well, how did I get in it? Sheree, we're talking about your relationship with Bills. Where does Candy come into that? But it's clear that Sheree was trying to find a way to bait Candy because she has something up her sleeve. But Sheree says, you have no proof of me not paying any bills, okay? Nor do you have proof of anyone suing me for stealing ideas. Now, Sheree is referring to a man called Johnny who had sued Candy uh, a couple of seasons ago because he claimed that Candy stole his idea for OLG, right? Again, Sheree trying to loop Candy into her response and Candy took the bait. So Candy says, let's not talk about you not paying for your fashions. And Sheree's like, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And she goes behind her back and she pulls out these DMs. To me, those DMs mean nothing. All it says is that Sheree paid who she was supposed to pay. I don't care about any of that. Sheree, pull up an invoice. Pull up a message from the actual designer saying, hey girl, I received your final payment. You are now free to use those designs on your website. You are now free to produce and sell those designs. Show me that. This DM from someone else who is not the designer proves nothing to me. Tell me what y'all think below. So Sheree and Candy get into it. They're going back and forth, back and forth. Sheree tells Candy to go mop her greasy ass floors in her restaurant. And Candy tells Sheree to worry about her new face. Sheree gets up and she's like, you could never, okay? And this is where the dream girls come into me because Sheree was like, now you're lying, you're lying. I've never been so thin. (laughs) And then it just became a stuttering, stammering mess. They were talking over each other. They were both trying to read each other, but they were both fumbling over their words. And you know, when you read somebody, it got to be smooth. It got to be quick. It got to be precise. And you cannot stumble over anything or it's not going to hit like it's supposed to hit. Candy says, you always say squats, not shots, but all the shots are in your face. Okay, that would have been a good read, but can't she kind of messed it up. She fumbled over her words. Then Sheree says, big face, little face, girl, you could never. And Candy says, the big faces you need to be worried about is your money. And I'm like, yes, that would have worked good too, but Candy, you messed it up. (laughs) It could have been so much better, but everybody was fumbling over their words. Sheree says that Candy had her body done four times. Candy was like, girl, who? Sheree was like, yo, I'm calling you. (laughs) I'm calling you. The common piece he's knocking (laughs) on. Candy was like, that's a lie. That's a lie. Okay. I did not get my body done no four times. Then they bring up Sheree having multiple nose jobs. They're like, girl, that's not even your first nose job. You been had a nose job. And they're just going back and forth about who had surgery, when they had it, how many surgeries they had. Girl, you know. And Andy shuts all of them down. He's like, don't y'all all go to the same person? <laughs> Andy (laughs) and he's like and what's big face little face he's like girl what does that mean but Sheree is referring to her swollen face versus her non-swollen face now but big face little face she kind of dragged herself with that one then Sheree says that Candy needs to focus on her business if she was focused on her business there wouldn't be all these shootings and I'm like okay so y'all are still blaming Candy for a bunch of hooligans who be shooting up the place how was that can't Okay, I don't see how that's on candy, but I digress. So then Sheree reaches back and pulls out something else. So she pulls out a pamphlet and this pamphlet is completely dedicated to candy. Now, I know what Sheree's intentions were, but it came off as obsessed. It came off as bothered. Okay, and when she pulled that out, they're like, oh, what's this? And Andy's like, oh, what's this? You printed a pamphlet. Candy says, I wish it would print some fashions. (laughs) That shit had me gagging (laughs) print some fashions boo so this little pamphlet had a bunch of bad reviews from candy's restaurant olg it had negative articles that had been posted about olg and then it also mentioned candy's store tags which has been in business for 14 years but it mentioned that they mark up their products and i'm like uh yeah sheree that's how business works everyone marks up their items (laughs) everyone sells their items for more than they purchased it for that's how you make a profit right? And that's the same thing that you're doing with your clothes from Shein. But the difference is, which Sheree still doesn't seem to understand, is that Sheree is claiming to be a fashion designer. Candy is not claiming to be a fashion designer. 
She just has a store where she resells items, okay? Those are two completely different things, and the fact that Sheree still doesn't get it is kind of concerning. All right, so all of the ladies do say that they have received all of the She by Sheree items that they purchased while they were in Portugal. Um, Sheree says that she still hasn't turned a profit, and in her defense, that is normal for most businesses of this time frame. And I'm just counting when she actually dropped her clothes. I'm not counting the 15 years that she had <laughs> working on this brand. I'll give her that one, but the way that she's running this business, I don't think she'll ever turn a profit because at this point, She by Sheree is like a joke. But Sheree gets up and she says, hey, Drew, you said that you never got a bag, so here's a bag, but I want Candy to open the bag. And inside of the bag, it's a little prop and Candy goes and scene. So now we're on to Drew and the things that went on with her during the season. Drew said that filming the movie actually went better than she thought it would. And they asked Candy how she feels about hearing Drew say that she would never do any movies below Lifetime after this. And Candy says, good luck. <laughs> Candy's like, girl, okay, good luck, good luck. That reminds me of when Sierra and Rihanna were going through their beef and Rihanna was like, good luck booking those stages that you speak of. <laughs> That's exactly what this reminded me of. Under her breath, Marlo mentions that Drew only got paid 10K for the role, but Candy says no, she got paid more than 10K. Now, we don't know exactly how much she got paid, but Candy says that it was more than 10K. And Drew just reiterates like, look, I'm an actress. I do have a minimum fee. But because Todd and Candy were just starting out, I did speak to my agent and we agreed that it would be okay to take this role for a smaller fee. And I don't understand why people don't respect that. I don't understand why people aren't commending that. It's because even though you took the role, you were still shitting on it. That, that's why. That's the problem. So next they asked Kenya, what's the difference between you shading Drew's video and calling it a low budget Beyonce video and Drew shading you and saying that you haven't been in a movie since Twa. Kenya says that her shade was fun shade, but she does apologize to Drew for making those comments. Next, we get onto this whole Latoya kiss thing that we are all tired of. And Kenya says that she was just trying to spare Drew by saying, maybe I didn't see what I saw, but in all actuality, she did see what she saw, but she was just trying to be a good friend because Drew was still married at the time and she didn't want to get Drew caught up in any trouble. Drew calls it candy-coated lies, but Candy says, look, I did not imagine it. I saw it. Marlo is still stuck on her 80%. She is 80% sure that she saw them kiss, okay? And then they bring up that Drew is always lying about something. Drew mentions in the after show that Candy said that she didn't even believe that Allison had a mental illness because she's always lying. Now we know Candy has been catching hella heat because of her speak on it show that she did with Courtney, and rightfully so, because Candy did make some very ignorant comments saying that Allison didn't look like someone who had mental illness. Now, Candy, girl, you don't know what people are going through. No one has to look like they have mental illness to have mental illness, okay? So hopefully she learns from all of this backlash that she's getting, both her and Courtney, and they educate themselves on mental illness so that they're less ignorant and they say less ignorant things about people who do have mental illness. So back to the reunion, everyone was like, yeah, girl, you do be lying though. Like, yeah, yeah, you do be lying. You be lying all the time. Sheree's like, when I first came back on this show, everybody told me that you be lying. <laughs> Damn, Drew, that is not a good reputation to have. And Candy says, with all of the lying that you've done on me, I'm now a little bit more prone to believe that you have actually been gaslighting and lying on Ralph. And I said, damn, that's a big statement. And Drew was like, I'm sorry, Candy. I just want to make sure we're good. And everybody's like, girl, no, y'all are not. Did you just hear what she said? Y'all are not good. Drew, are you in La La Land? Even Andy was like, uh, no, sis, y'all are not good. Then they show clips of Drew lying. They show one clip of her saying that she kissed a girl. And then they show another clip of her saying that she never kissed a girl. Again, we're over it. We don't really give a damn. So a fan asked Marlo if she feels bad for dragging Drew about her body because can't everyone afford to get their body done like she did? And Marlo says that everyone on the stage done got something done. So it is what it is. Then they bring up Ralph. Now, as we know, Drew and Ralph are still cohabitating. And all of these women who witnessed Ralph be an a-hole to Drew, right? They saw more than we saw because all we see is what's on TV. They're actually there and they see everything behind the scenes. All of these women sat and told Drew that they think that her and Ralph can work things out and they should get back together. What? Let those two move on with their lives. Just yesterday, Ralph came out and accused Drew of trying to get child support money from him for Josiah. Like, I think that those two are so far gone. Later, we'll see in the episode that Ralph has been talking to Marlo about their relationship. Ralph has been reaching out to all of Drew's enemies. Like, 
there's no turning back. There's no turning back. And the fact that these ladies are telling Drew that she can work it out and they should stay together just so that she can say she's married. No, we are done with that shit. Y'all really want women to be stuck in these loveless struggle marriages where they hate each other just to say they have a husband. No, that shit is, no, we're not doing that no more. So now we see Courtney and Magneta come out. Now I do not like Courtney at all, but baby, her dress was giving, her dress was giving, not so much when she was sitting down, but when she came out on stage, oh, she looks good. She looks good. I did not love Magneta's whole getup. I think her boobs look really nice in it, but I didn't love it when she was sitting down. So Andy asks Courtney, what is your relationship to Ralph? And Courtney says, that her dad's sister is married to Ralph's uncle. Drew says that it's giving fake cousin and then she reaches in her little purse and she pulls out a plum and she throws it over to Courtney. Because <laughs> the joke is that Courtney doesn't have a peach. She's a plum, so, you know. And Courtney's like, oh, that was corny. Another corny prop. And I do agree, it was kind of corny, Drew. But Andy picks up the plum and he starts eating it. <laughs> so now we go through Marlo's season and we see her and the boys and the boys are both doing well. And then we go over to her and Scott Lee. Andy asks if her and Scott Lee are still dating. And Marlo says, yes, they're still dating. They're just having fun. And they've been hunching. And Marlo also says that Courtney and Phaedra have been assisting her with getting her record expunged. And I'm like, damn, you got two people on the job and they ain't fixed it yet. But you know, Candy had to roll her eyes at that at the mention of Phaedra Parks, right? So next they bring up the DM that Roy sent to Marlo and they ask Kenya, what's the difference between Roy sending Marlo a DM and Martel sending you a DM? Here's another place where Kenya fell short. So Kenya says that it wasn't a DM, but what it was was that Roy replied to her live and it went to her DM. And all the girls start laughing and Sandy's like, um, I'm here to tell you that that is not how it works. Now, probably what Kenya meant was that Roy replied to Marlo's story. Now, when someone replies to your story, yes, that does go to your DM. Trust me. I know. OK, but if that's the case, Kenya, you got to know what you're talking about. You got to say the right thing. OK, because they were able to trip you up. And it could possibly be because she's just not savvy with the ins and outs of Instagram and stuff like that. But girl, that is something that you knew that they would bring up. You should have made sure that you had all of your shit together for that response. But Kenya says, look, Marlo and Roy did not go on any real date because all of Marlo's dates end with money being left on the dresser. And everybody's like, "Ooh, oh, my God, look. Marlo, at this point, if I were you, I would just start owning the shit because they're going to keep coming at you at it. If I was Marlo, I'd have been like, and do, and do, you better leave that money on the dresser. That's the only way that they'll stop bothering Marlo about it. If she starts showing that she don't give a damn what they say, then eventually it won't be fun for them to bring it up anymore. But clearly, every time they bring it up, she's ashamed about it. So they're going to keep bringing it up. Another scene with Kenya that had me like, oh my gosh. So Andy says, hey, Roy hasn't been around all season. Is it that he didn't want to film? And Kenny's like, yeah, he didn't really want to come around because he saw this commercial where Marlo was saying some really nasty things about him and people were calling him and they were like, ew, you dated Marlo? And Andy was like, well, if he saw a commercial, that means that we were already done filming. So, and she's like, oh no, it was the pre-teaser. And he was like, Okay, but yeah, we would have already been done filming at that point. And then Kenya tried to deflect and she's like, yeah, well, Roy's a businessman and he doesn't want to. And Andy's like, yeah, I, I get all of that. But what I'm saying is during filming, he wasn't around. Right. So pretty much the excuses that Kenya is trying to give, the timeline isn't adding up. She's trying to use what happened in the commercial and in the super teaser as a reason to why Roy wasn't around during the season. But the season was already filmed by the time that he would have seen all of that. So Kenya... Girl, they caught you up again. Oh, secondhand embarrassment. Next, we move on to Courtney, and she's there talking about her and Ralph are Fast and Furious cousins. Now, I don't know what that's code for, but Courtney says that at Ross's party, her and Ralph realized that they both would stay at the same aunt's house, and that's how they realized that they were cousins. How the hell does that conversation come about with some random man that you just met at a party? Tell me, I would not meet a man at a party and somehow we start discussing that we both stayed at the same house when we were kids. How does that even come up within minutes of meeting somebody? How is that possible? It's not. And we'll just run through some other things that they spoke about. They spoke about Sheree being the bone collector. They spoke about Drew and her $1,000 lawsuit. Um, Sheree at the Gucci brunch. 
where Sheree thought that Kenya's outfit was not Gucci, but Kenya's like, no, my outfit was Gucci. It just didn't have all of the logos on it. And then a fan calls out Sheree for not addressing people in person, only in her confessional. And then a fan named Kenya wants to know why Sheree did not defend Kenya when Kim Zolciak said, ew, Kenya, she's still alive. And Sheree's like, well, girl, what did you want me to say? That you're alive? Like, it wasn't a big deal to me. We all shade each other. What's the big deal? Then someone asks Marlo to do her little fashion corner the same way that she did at the little Gucci brunch. I do agree with what she said about Kenya's dress. I do think that it was too many feathers and I did not like Kenya's hair either. And Marlo, you know Sheree's dress was not cute. All she could say was, mm, simple. Yeah, girl, the dress was not cute. It wasn't giving at all. And Marlo, you did look like Mrs. Roper from Three's Company with that robe on, okay? <laughs> Now we get onto the discussion about alliances and collusion. We see that Magneta might have brought back the wrong information to the girls by saying that Courtney called Drew a bitch. Courtney claims that they were actually imitating the conversation that happened between Drew and Latoya. She says that the only reason why she admitted to calling Drew a bitch in the finale was because she was just annoyed and angry at Drew. Sanya and Candy go back and forth about Sanya laughing when they made a joke about Candy bringing out the ghetto and why Sanya didn't defend her. Sanya says that she didn't feel like it was a big deal. We know Sanya is a flip flopper. I don't know why Candy would expect anything more from her. They talk about Marlo slamming the door in Magneta's face, right? And Sheree makes a good point here. She's like, why did you call us hyenas for not defending you? You should know if someone slammed the door in your face or not. You shouldn't need us to agree with that for you to know if someone slammed the door in your face. And Sheree made a good point with that one because I don't need anyone else to confirm for me if someone slammed the door in my face. So now they talk about Courtney calling Drew a liar and she's saying no one believes her. And it's funny to listen to Courtney because she sounds just like Ralph. You can tell that her and Ralph talk a lot about Drew. Now we all know that Drew lies a lot, okay? But just hearing Courtney say it, I'm like, damn, she sounds just like Ralph. They say the same exact thing. But they bring up Courtney's karma comment about Kenya. Well, Courtney's karma comment about Kenya. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> but they bring that up and they ask her, why does she feel that Kenya was getting karma? And Courtney says, I said that because when Kenya fell, she was cursing out production and Kenya didn't deny that. So I believe that she was cursing out productions. And I knew that nothing was wrong with her. So that's why I said that. And Kenya's like, girl, you're not a doctor. How do you know that nothing was wrong with me? <laughs> and that's true. Girl, you don't know. She could have broke something. You don't know that. Then they asked Kenya if her performance in Birmingham was even real. Okay. Because it seems like she wasn't aware of most things that were going on during that trip. And Magneta jumps in and she says, no, it was real. We went there. We rehearsed multiple times. It was real. It was supposed to happen. Then they asked Kenya if her salon is done. And she says that they're currently working on the loft area. Now, I'm sure that you guys have probably seen that video. I don't even know her name, but this girl who went to the salon and she was peeking in the hole and she saw that it looked like Kenya's salon was still under construction and the place that she actually filmed her soft opening in was not her salon. It's actually something else. But Kenya and Candy came out to say, girl, shut up. You don't even know what you're talking about. It's only part of the salon that's in construction. And the girl had to come back and she apologized. So we'll see what happens. Someone asked Candy if she still even wants to be on the show because from what they could see, she'd be clocking in late and leaving early, okay? So do you even want to be here? Candy admits that she bit off way more than she could chew this season. She's really busy, but she does want to be on the show. And why would she not want to be on the show? It's easy money and free promotion for everything that she has going on. Chow, now they bring up Drew still denying this relationship with Ty, okay? Drew said that's her story. She's gonna stick to it. Ty is just some basketball player who she's friends with, okay? And when she made the comment about Ty being her crush, she was just joking. It's all a joke. It's not real. Okay, girl, whatever. He says that her boo, I mean her cousin, Ralph, was very hurt about those rumors that he heard about his wife, Drew, and Ty. And Drew says, girl, we know Ralph has been coaching you on what to say, and that I do believe. I did mention that in my last review. Clearly, Ralph has been feeding Courtney information on things to say. And then Drew starts going off on Courtney. She's like, don't you ever bring up my effing son, this adoption Keep our name out of your mouth, bitch. Don't bring my son up ever again in your life. And Courtney's like, and what are you going to do about it? Girl, I might have flew across that room. Honestly. Courtney is claiming that she didn't say anything about Drew's son. And Andy chimes in. He's like, girl, yes, you did. Yes, you did talk about her son. Courtney's like, I didn't talk about her son. I just spoke about the adoption. Girl, shut up entirely. Just shut all the way up when it comes to her son. And Drew says, you were talking all that shit. You didn't know the cameras were rolling. Now, Drew... Did you really think 
that she didn't know the cameras were rolling? Because I said that in my last review. Oh, she knew that the cameras were rolling. And Courtney even confirms that. And she's like, girl, I knew them cameras were on. She knew she was mic'd up. She's like, I said it more than once. <laughs> she wanted it to be seen. She wanted it to be heard. And all that does is confirm that Ralph is feeding her information. Because we see that just last night, Ralph tweeted about Drew wanting to collect child support for her son, Josiah, right? Ralph, the stepdad of the year, right? The stepdad who wrote this whole book about being a great step parent is now blasting Drew. So clearly Ralph fed Courtney that information and sent her into that confessional to say those things. It's obvious. And I can't believe that Drew thought that Courtney really thought that her mic was off. Girl, are you that dense? But child, that was the first part of the reunion. A lot went on. Like I said, stunts and shows. Like I said, I feel like Kenny was not on her A game during this part. So I really hope that she redeems herself in the next episode. Let me know all of your thoughts below. Don't forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all in my next video. Bye! About it. Says we're gonna talk about it.